This brief presentation provides an overview of some of the important information related to this course that helps establish the role the first set of course projects are going to play in the overall big picture of the class. And these course projects address community building. Now I'm starting with a picture of some ruby slippers. And I like to use this image to help communicate the fact that I believe technology can help teachers improve their practice in many different ways. But the most important ways they can use technology are, the, are ways that are the most obvious. And yet some, somehow um, it's easy to overlook and, and be blind to some of the really important ways in which technology can be used to improve instruction. So I use the Ruby slippers to communicate that um, I think we have a lot of answers to, to what's wrong in education, what needs to be improved, and how it can be improved, that we're, we're kind of all walking around with the answers. And that's an important theme uh, throughout this class. And I have to say that some of the ways that I'm going to communicate, I believe technology can have an impact on education are so obvious and they're, they've been right in front of us as technology has unfolded over the last few years. And all it needs is a really good sort of push to see things that are there but not, might not be obvious to us. For example, I, I don't know if you've ever noticed this before, but you probably have seen FedEx trucks buzzing around town. But have you ever noticed that in the word X on the logo, there's actually an arrow. That's, that's something that one of my children pointed out to me one time. And ever since it was pointed out, I've never been able to see the FedEx logo without seeing that arrow, that obvious arrow. There's something else that's kind of obvious about what needs to be improved in education. Um, and again, it's something that we carry around with us and walk around with us is our own college transcripts. And here I have a transcript from a student at Ball State University. I just got this online. I don't know who this student is. And um, I, uh, but, but it's, a, it's a typical transcript and you all have one of these. Um, and I have, I have one as well. And what I notice about anybody's college transcript is you could look at four or five or six years worth of time spent in school in higher education, and you could look at the listing of all the courses that you have taken. And I know if you're like me, you can look at that list and you can circle and identify classes that you have no, you don't even remember taking. You'd be really hard pressed to try and communicate to anybody else what you actually learned in those classes. Um, but again, they're there. You spent the money and the time to participate in them, and yet you walked away from the experience later without any fundamental or noticeable change in, in you. And to me, that is quite uh, an indictment of the amount of time that is actually wasted in education um, just to get through the system. And why, why is it wasted? Why? Well, here's a picture of a typical uh, large classroom lecture experience in higher education. It's kind of a cool desk arrangement, but it's a class where you have a, an instructor at the podium near the front of the class and students sit there as recipients to the experience. And unlike the way you tend to learn naturally, in the world outside school, this arrangement right here that you're viewing may not be the best approach to permanently facilitating changes in your behavior, changes in your knowledge structure, changes in your belief system. It may not be the best way to do it. And one problem I have about this particular approach or this particular model is that I can go into a high school today in southwestern Virginia and I can see teachers teaching this way. I can see students sitting as passive recipients to the experience in their desks, just being exposed to information. And not just in high schools, but I can see it in junior high schools as well. And it's a model that is 
keeps sort of insinuating itself into the education system in at earlier and earlier grades. And again, what's obvious about this is that it's not how we typically tend to learn important things in the world outside of school. And so frankly, it doesn't make that much sense that we have sort of perpetuated this model inside of school. So a lot of the projects in this particular course are focused on having you help engage learners in experiences that look very different from what you see on the screen. There's something else I want to say about technology, and that is that I believe it can have a, an impact on improving the professional practice of teachers as well as the effectiveness of learning experiences for students. And again, I believe that the ways in which that can happen are actually right in front of us. So I have a Facebook lo logo, and even though I'm not the biggest fan of Facebook in my life, I can tell you right now, the very idea of a tool like Facebook becoming part of people's lives, connecting people, providing an avenue for communication and engagement in ways that didn't exist technology-wise a few years ago, it's pretty profound and it's right in front of us. And so there are a lot of really important lessons we can learn from the power of a tool like Facebook. And the first collection of, of assignments you're going to experience in this class address the role that technology might play in helping to build community and open up channels of communication, which again, I believe are very important ways in which we might improve um, the state of education in general. Now this class involves a collection of projects in which you're going to be developing or creating things within three categories that I think obviously address how we can use technology to improve teaching. And I will say more about the other categories later in the course, but I'm going to focus for just a few moments here on how, or on community building, what it is and how technology might be used to help facilitate it. And that, in fact, is the focus of the first few projects for this course. So let's talk just, let me talk briefly just about communities. Um, teachers face five fundamental types of communities in their practice. One is their, the in-class community, the community of students and teacher that are part of the ecosystem or the environment within the classroom on a day-to-day -day basis. There's the school community, which may involve other classes in the same grade level, other classes in the same subject area, or just the entire school in general. Then there's the local community, that is the school and all of the other entities that influence and are influenced by the local schools. And then of course, there's the global communi communities that involve sort of people connecting wherever they are in the world using technology. Um, and finally, there are professional communities, and those are communities of other teachers that use resources like technology to help establish spaces where um, members of the community can, can interact with each other, support each other, and learn and grow from each other. So those are the five basic types of communities that are part of a teacher's job, part of their, 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 their life as professionals. But I want to focus this brief presentation on how you build community and particularly how technology might play a role in helping people build community. Technology, as I mentioned, is, is sort of ubiquitous in our world. It's all around us. And there are some, some um, technologies that have become part of the day-to-day -day experience for most people. And one aspect of these technologies that is a commonality in terms of their importance and use in our lives is their ability to help us communicate with each other and in in and then by um, as an as a result of that help cultivate and and support communities you have email you have blogs um, you're going to learn about some tools like class dojo which is a tool technology tool that teachers can use to help support community there's developing websites, uh, as well as social media sites like Facebook. Um, one of the first characteristics of 
how technology can be used to help build community regardless of what the community is, whether it's an in-class community or a school community or even a professional community, is using technology to help establish a social presence. That is helping to, to communicate who you are in the community and have you learn who others are in the community. It's hard to be a member of a community if you don't know who the other community members are and if they don't know who you are. And so using technology to establish a social presence is a very important way in which technology can be used to help build community. And in this class, you're being asked to create a website and create a rather comprehensive About Me page that will um, provide information about who you are, hopefully some good pictures, as well as a map that you're going to develop using Google Earth to, to communicate a story about things that you have learned in, in your life uh, that are important to you. And you're going to provide some context for that by at least, at the very least, um, communicating where you learned it, the environment in which you learned some important things. So establishing a social presence is one of the, a big way in which can, technology can be used to help facilitate or cultivate community. Another way in which technology can be used to help build community is to establish a gathering place. Obviously, you have to have a space where you interact with each other and technology can serve that purpose actually pretty well. And if you are on Facebook or some other social media tool, then you know how well technology can be used to actually create a space that you participate in or go to um, on a regular basis. Another way that you build community is to get to know students and their parents. And again, this all happens through communication. And if you can't communicate with uh, students and parents regularly in class, you can certainly do it via technology. And of course, communicating in general is one characteristic that helps build community. And technology is used in many different ways, in more traditional ways, like, like the telephone or the cell phone, excuse me. But you also have, of course, email. And some teachers use texting to have sort of more immediate, um, immediate ways to communicate messages. Um, and there are certainly other ways that you can use technology as well to do that. Building community also um, involves promoting membership. That is, you're in a group that has a distinct character to it. And, um, and there are lots of different ways that you can do this, either with technology or not, in terms of class names, team names, um, um, and other ways that, that make people feel as if they are a member that that they that they have membership in the community and as part of that that they have a, a voice they have a say in what the community is going to um, is going to 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 provide for them they have some influence over it they can they can help guide and influence the community even if it's just a belief in the influence um, uh, providing avenues for parents to communicate with you as teachers um, helps them feel a bigger part of the community because they feel as if their voice might be heard. Also, communities um, help fulfill personal needs. There's always a reason why people belong to, to communities. And, um, and there's interpersonal needs, uh, needs to, to connect, needs to feel less out of control, among other things. And so um, I don't have any specific examples of how specifically technology might be used to help fulfill personal needs, but it just it bears mentioning that fulfilling uh, personal needs is an important part of building community. So is promoting shared emotional connections. I have a picture here of, a, of people on a tour because if you've ever been on a tour before, there's kind of an interesting phenomenon that people report being on a tour, and that is you're with a group of people, perhaps strangers, at the beginning of the tour. And by the end of the tour, you feel uh, as if you're part of a group, whether you communicated with everybody in your tour or not. The fact is, you all had the same experience together. And if it's on a tour, you're probably experiencing some things that elicit some kind of an emotional response or some kind of feeling in that way. And by that very um, response, you end up having a um, feeling as if you're part of a community. And so um, providing members of the community, of the classroom community, with experiences like online experiences, maybe, maybe 
um, really inspiring articles or inspiring videos and providing community members with an opportunity to respond to them, maybe in a blog or a discussion board, the fact that everybody has a chance to view those, those resources together and respond to them is part of a shared emotional connection that they have um, with each other and with you. Um, and, um, and also networking with other teachers is a very important part of using technology to help build community for yourself as a professional. And you're going to do a couple of projects in this class where you reach out and become part of, of communities of practice, um, both in terms of sharing resources as well as um, identifying ways in which you might plan out some professional development or professional growth opportunities. Um, another important um, aspect of facilitating or building community is facilitating constructive collaboration skills. And that is, um, you're going to have a group of students, no matter what grade level you teach, you will have a group of students who, who do not all know how to be in groups constructively. And so you cannot have a successful community in your classroom if you don't help your students learn the fundamental basic skills required to be in a constructive, collaborative environment. And so you're going to be exposed in the, one of the first projects to the use of a tool, um, a technology tool that you can use to help facilitate interpersonal skills like encouraging group members, listening attentively, responding to questions, as well as cooperative learning skills. That is, what does it mean to be part of a group, um, carrying out assigned roles and such, as well as important project management skills. Um, and these are all skill sets, of course, that no matter what grade level you're in can benefit you as a group member, as well as constituting an important collection of skills that can be used and applied in the real world in some very important ways. And as I mentioned, the tool that we're going to use um, in this class to help facilitate those skills is one is a tool called Class Dojo, and it's an excellent tool for kindergarten through eighth grade, but I believe as an ex-science teacher in high school that it can also be a very valuable tool uh, for st even older students, and so you're gonna see how that works. And within the idea of using a tool to help facilitate constructive collaboration skills, you're going to learn a little bit more about cooperative learning strategies and about the five components of cooperative learning, positive interdependence, individual accountability, face-to-face -face interactions, um, interpersonal skills, and group processing. Those are all important key elements to helping learners in an in-class environment um, become constructive collaborators. And that is going to be at the very heart of any community building activities you do as a teacher.